So let's explore why exactly this is happening and what's, what's the value proposition in Centum cashing out now. George Bodo is an investment analyst. He joins us now from the Kenyan capital via Skype. Um, thank you for your time this evening, George. So what's, what's the value proposition here by being bought out by Access Bank? What are they bringing to the table beyond just capital? Um, I think that there are two ways to look at this transaction. The first way is it's a very strong statement from Access Bank. Um, just remember that just a couple of months ago, Access Bank bought some transnational bank, which is a very small tier three bank. And then on the back of that transaction, they are near year nine bank that just bought um, Citibank, Bank, which, which is also another tier, small tier three bank. By the way, if they combine those two, those two banks, um, Access Bank will now jump to a tier three bank. So if tier two bank, the total asset was about 57 billion change. It's a very strong statement. And the second, the other way to look at it, the second way to look at this transaction, is the fact that Centum, which is a private equity company largely, is a trading company. It's in the business of fattening bulls. And this is a case of one bull that has reached an optimal fat level. And it's time to exit it. But then again, the bank, buys, and this is Centum's own description that I'm using here, the bank was growing. It had become, in their words, fairly able to compete fairly with its peers for big ticket deals. It's a growing asset. It's throwing off cash. It's, it's turned around from the losses it used to make in the past. So if the asset is that good, why give it away? Why sell it? Why not just keep it and grow it? You know, let me tell you, Rama, this was the first bank that was Centum was running. Centum had never, been, had never had a shareholding, a majority shareholding in the bank. They had no experience in running a bank. The only financial services business that they've run for successfully is insurance, which is UAP. And this is the first time running a bank. Running a bank is a different, totally different ballgame. And by the way, CTN had never given them a dividend since 2014 because they came to realize that, you know, a bank business is totally different. It's highly regulated. You need to recapture the bank over and over again. And if you look at the amount of money they They've injected in the bank to, just to strengthen the balance sheet. Um, uh, I think it's in, in almost 1.5 billion shillings over the last, uh, I think, uh, over the last six years. Um, so the point here is that running a business, looking at a private equity company that is in the business of fattening bulls and looking at a, an investment horizon of five years typically, uh, for, after which they need to exit at a decent multiple, it was going to take them so long to exit. To, to fatten city and bank, by the way, to the point that city starts giving them dividends. Um, and, and I think for me, this is an opportunity for them to cut down on their losses. And by the way, if you look at the valuation, the exit of the bank, the exit at a par, at, 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 um, at par to book, there's a par exit, they didn't, um, which is right the reflection of the banking valuation right now. Banks right now are trading at low book value, most of them. And I think this is a, a decent exit multiple for, for center. And in terms of center, the cost, they're holding the investment at 2.8 billion, um, which is what they showed last year in, as of September. The legacy at 4.3. Oh, well, well the, it was it was a fattened bull. So I don't think that I think they were running a risk of overstaying this asset. And for a private equity company, there's always a risk that if you overstay an asset, you may not be able to realize a fair value of it. All right, but this then also leaves their portfolio relatively heavily concentrated, right, in, in real estate, because they've, they've exited a bunch of other businesses as well, right? They left Al Masi, the, the relatively profitable um, uh, bottling business that they had. And a lot of shareholders, perhaps, if you look at what happened with the price, uh, the share price today, down by 6% in, at some point in, in trading today. I mean, in these sort of market conditions, you've got incomes that are falling, interest rates are going up, inflation is relatively high. What are the risks of being so heavily concentrated in, in real estate assets, which in some cases can be very liquid? Yeah, not, not just in some cases. Real estate is very liquid. If you look at Centum's balance sheet today, balance sheet is very liquid. And by the way, if you look at you talk about the share price not responding. The share price is not responding, which is a reflection of the fact that Centum now is a real estate company. It's no longer a private equity company. Because if you look at the portfolio right now, portfolio right now is, is purely real estate, and that's a big concern. Um, if you look at the evolution of Centum over the last 10 years, right? 10 years ago, Centum had nine investee companies, which were giving it cash generating companies, which were giving it about $5 million in dividends every year. And that investors loved that. Now, 
over the last seven years, they've slowly exited these companies. And to the point now, they don't have any company left in the field. And look at what they're going to use the money for. 75% of the money going to be to pay down debt. They're going to have about one billion change left. Um, where's the cash purchased to do any additional acquisition? Right? They'll have to sell them land. Now, in this economy, as you say, right now, the way things are, realizing value on land is going to be difficult. So I think a situation where, you're going to see a situation where the market is likely going to continue discounting this trade. Now, remember the NAV as a last close of last year was 62 shillings. Share price around 10 shillings. The company is trading at a sixth of NAV. It's a reflection of that evolution of the portfolio. You can't be selling cash cows, right? That are giving you $5 million every year in dividends. Now, disposing all those and you having land left in the bank, which is a very liquid balance right now. Indeed. Um, one last question for you. Um, if if you're to assess Centum then for all the all the things that we've discussed, right, heavily concentrated in deeply liquid assets in the real estate space, they've bet heavily on things like uh, the assets they have down in Vipingo, they've bet heavily on this um, mixed use development uh, with a mall, a hotel and, 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 and residential areas in two rivers in the Kenya capital, Nairobi. What would your recommendation view uh, or rather what would your recommendation be on Centum? Hold buy or just cash out now? No, my recommendation is if they can liquidate the existing religious portfolio. We need to go back to the same time that we knew 10 years ago. It had a portfolio of companies that was cash generating. As I said, remember, as I said, it's a trading company. Now, they need cash. They need a watch to do acquisitions, so they need to be offloading. Well, to a, to a large extent, being a trading company, there's also it's, it's also right that they don't obtain certain assets. But then you need to substitute your assets. You cannot sell off cash generating assets and then substitute with in liquid assets. Now that's a wrong strategy. So they need to go back to where they were 10 years ago, where they had a huge portfolio of cash generating liquid assets. They need to reduce that land portfolio to a third of where it was 10 years ago and increase the private equity portfolio to half of the portfolio right now. So the private equity portfolio now is zero, essentially. They need to build it back to half they need to continue building the marketable security portfolio to another significant level and de-emphasize on real estate. Otherwise, the market is likely to continue discounting the stock.